Hello fellow Unreal Engine designers and developers. Today in our continuing Arctic Forest series, we're going to complete this air crash site by adding some rocks, some footprints leading away from the plane, and finally a localized snowstorm. So let's get straight into it. Here's where we got to a last time with our commercial plane and our engine fire. So it's looking a little bit bare around the uh, landscape, around the plane. So let's start off by creating some rocks and we'll use a uh, procedural foliage volume just like we did for the forests. Uh, but I'll show you a new parameter that might be useful in, in this situation. So go to the add menu, procedural foliage volume, and just drag it in to the landscape. And we'll need to scale it up a bit. Uh, so use the space bar to cycle between the rotation move and scale and let's just scale it up a little bit here maybe scale it more on the x and y axis so, something like that let's just rotate around so i can see where it is okay that looks pretty good um, so now we've got the procedural foliage volume, we need to uh, attach a procedural foliage spawner. So let's attach the rock spawner that we created earlier in the series. So with the procedural foliage volume selected, in fact, I'm going to rename this F2. Let's call it PFV rocks air crash. And in the details section, if I go down to the procedural foliage spawner and select our PFS rocks that we created in a few episodes ago. And next thing I want to do is just to simulate it. So re-simulate and there are a load of rocks. Now first thing is there's uh, probably too many there. Second thing is it's blinding the obvious where that this box ends. So this is the new parameter I'm going to show so that you can decrease the density as it goes out from the center of the box so that by the time you get to the end it doesn't look so obvious. So we're going to go into our uh, spawner here. So do browse to here and what we'll actually do is because we don't want to affect our original spawner we'll create a new one. So do control D to duplicate and let's call this PFS rocks air crash and then go back to the procedural foliage volume and select, set it to this new one here. So nothing will change at the moment. We're not, we haven't simulated it anyway, but we won't affect the original spawner. So now go to back to the new one, open it up, and you'll see that we had two types of stones here. First thing we'll do is we'll just get rid of one of them. So just go to the foliage type object, second one and delete it. Uh, now what we'll do is we will browse to this foliage type and again we don't want to change it we just want to duplicate it so just do control D to duplicate it and name wise we'll call it just foliage type 2 okay open it up and the thing we want to change in this is we want to change in the procedural section there's this density fall off so at the moment we're not using that fall off curve what that means is that the stones or foliage whatever you're doing this using in the spawner will uh, slowly fade out uh, in the um, in the box that you've created so let's click on that save it okay close that down we can close down the uh, save and close down the spawner now as well. And let's just make sure actually the spawner has got this foliage type in. Let's go into the spawner again. Sorry about that. To tell you to turn it down. Yeah, we've got the original foliage type here. So make sure you've got foliage type two selected so that we're using a new one with the density fall off. And finally, go back to your procedural foliage volume re-simulate and you can see now that there are fewer rocks and they're more concentrated in the center. If you need more, obviously you can go in and change the uh, 
the uh, concentration to your liking. But that looks good for me. So let's move on to creating the footprints. Right, the next thing I want to do is create some footprints leading away from the plane. So telling a story that somebody got out of the cockpit and trudged off into the forest looking for help. So we can use Quixel Bridge to find some decals of footprints and then project those onto the snow. So go into the Add uh, menu and Quixel Bridge. And in here, search for snow footprints. And you'll find all of these various different options here. What we're looking for is something like this snow footprints. Uh, you'll see that they uh, they will project nicely on snow and all we have to do is just match the colour and opacity in to make it blend in nicely. So with that one selected choose the quality you want. I'm just going to go with high quality here. Uh, you may need to download. I've downloaded in a previous project and then just click on add and that will add it into your project and you will see here we have the textures and the material instance of the decal. So you can now close bridge down and what we'll do is we will leave that open here. Just zoom in a bit closer to the cockpit. So let's get to just under this door and drag this material instance in and just put it down on the ground here. And we use space to go to the rotate tool and rotate it around. I'll rotate it 90 degrees and then use space again to get to the move tool and just move it into position. Okay, something like that. I'm going to have it so it's just sort of coming beneath the rock here. And the um, first thing we want to do before we do, we're going to duplicate this a few times. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just check the scale of it. So if I go to let's let's close this window down here. If I go into play mode, and then if I go up to the footprint here, you can see that it's it's a couple of things. It's pretty huge at the moment, and also you can see that it's actually projecting onto the player as well. If I'd had it close to the um, plane, it might have even projected onto that. So let's fix both those problems. Let's start off by fixing the scale issue. That's an easy one to do. So come out of play mode uh, with our decal selected. Let's just go up to the scale and let's um, first of all, let's just change the scale on the with the unlocked on the Z axis 0.4. And you can see what that's done is it's stretched it out. So it's created, let me get a bit closer so you can see. So it's created it a little bit more elongated here, which I prefer. And then make it uniform. And let's now scale the whole thing down by 0.5. Okay, and let's again move it just under this rock here. Right, let's check, check that out, go into play. And if I go up there, you can see that actually looks pretty good in terms of the footprint size. OK, and the next thing to do is just get it to blend in nicely as well. So what we will do is we will come out of play mode. Browse to the material instance and open it up. Move it across so we can still see the footprint and Let's just zoom in so we can see it a bit closer. You can see you've got various options here for changing the way that that decal looks. The main one I want to change here is the color overlay. I'll make it a bit darker so you can see that it's up up here. It's very white. As I drag it down, it gets darker. It's slightly bluey, but we can affect that if we come down to the um, the opacity intensity and then we can reduce that. So if I reduce that to 0.5 say you can see that it uh, almost blends in. That's probably a little bit too subtle. So let's go in between 0.7 and you can see now that 
it looks as though it's sort of part of the snow and we can now duplicate it. So let's save that, come out, zoom out a bit. And what we can do is we can start to duplicate this now. So just hold down the Alt key and you can drag this along to create your next decal. Drag it along for the next one. You might have to move it down a bit because of the slope. So just be aware of that as well. As you're, as you're moving around, you might have to drag it down. And you can also start to rotate it as well. Sort of moving towards the moving towards the forest. So let's come out of here. So I'd probably continue this on until it went over the ridge, but you can see now that if I go into play mode, that those footprints are leading away and I could follow them towards the forest. So last thing we need to just fix here is the decal showing on the player. So if you have anything in the way of it and you don't want the footprints to show, you just need to change the uh, property of that mesh so that it receives decals is set to false. So to do that, we'll come out of play mode. We will go into the Explorer uh, with control space, find your third person folder, blueprints, third person character and open it up. And if you select the mesh here, you should find somewhere in here, receives decals. In fact, the easiest way to find it is probably just to search up here, decal. There you go, receive decal. So at the moment it's set to on. So set that to false compile and save and now if we go into play mode you'll see that the player no longer has the footprints projected on them so play around with those you can make them a little bit larger if you want to see them in a cinematic for example and then you can project them and uh, duplicate them further towards the forest uh, so let's move on to the final thing today, which is to create a localized snowstorm around the plane. To create our snowstorm, we're going to create a new Niagara system from a template. So let's go into the Explorer window. You should have an FX folder that we use to create the other Niagara system for the engine fire. So in here, Let's create a new Niagara system either here if you've still got it or just go into FX Niagara system and we'll do new system from selected emitter and probably the best one to start off with is this hanging particulates and then we'll adjust it for what we, what we want it to look like. So click on that, click on the plus to add it and finish and call it NS Snowstorm. And let's just drag it in, in sort of just below the uh, plane here, then drag it up. Uh, let's just check it's in front of the plane here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see at the moment, let's get close up. There's not much happening here. It's just a few hanging white sprites there. We want something that's much more turbulent and noisy. So let's now open this up. And we'll start to change some of the settings here. So go into the hanging particulates section here. And uh, first thing we'll do is we'll, if you look at the parameters on the right side, first thing we'll do is look at the, uh, whether it's a loop, so it is at the moment an infinite loop, which is what we want. Um, two second loop is fine, but we want a, a lot more particles. So let's go to the spawn rate. At the moment that's 50 and let's change that to way up to 2000. Okay. And you can see we have a lot more particles in there, but they're just moving very, very slowly. So the 
next thing we want to do is it's got two uh, shapes that it's um, spawning from. We don't really need a box and a sphere. So let's get rid of the box. Um, just um, right click and delete that. So it's just got a sphere here that it's it's coming from. So that's a sort of center. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to change the uh, noise so that it goes swirls much further out and round in a random fashion. So if you choose the curl noise force here, what we'll do is we'll make the noise strength 2000. And now you can see that our particles are flying all over the place. And then we'll reduce the frequency to five so that although it's flying around, it's not flying around at a huge velocity. It's sort of blowing around in the wind. So that's looking quite nice. Um, what I would say next is that I'd quite like the particles to be larger. So in the initialized particle here, we can change some of those uh, settings. So let's start off with the size and we'll use the random between two sizes and we'll go between five as the smallest and 15 as the largest. Okay, and now we have much larger flakes in our window. And the next thing, well, actually, let's see what it looks like in the, yeah, so this is in the scene at the moment. It looks pretty good, but the only thing I would say is that everything is sort of pure uh, white at the moment. Whereas in reality, snowflakes can be slightly transparent. So let's introduce a bit of transparency into these particles as well. So let's go back to the system. And in the, let's see, I can find it here, the color mode here, let's do a random range. And the minimum, we're going to do zero, 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 and an alpha of zero, which means it's random between completely uh, transparent, so invisible, to white, but let's not make it a full alpha of one, let's make it 0.5, so that even the top range of random sprites is going to be slightly transparent as well. And click on save here, and let's have a look what that looks like. And that's pretty good. So you can see that the sort of the speed at which the parts move around feels right. The transparency just makes them look a little bit more realistic. Um, and if I go into play mode, yeah, that kind of looks nice as I run around it as well. So again, if you want to play around to suit your particular style you can have a go at making the maybe the sphere that creates them larger so that they spread over a larger area but just uh, play around until you get it to the taste you want so um, that's pretty much it although let's just do one final organization thing come out of play mode we've got all of these new elements here uh, let's put them all in a folder for the air crash site so start with the commercial plane and go down to the procedural foliage volume and let's right click move to create new folder and we'll call this one air crash and so now we have all those nicely uh, organized into a subfolder and so there we have it for today so we've added the rocks we've added footprints uh, going away from the plane and we've added a snowstorm uh, in the final episode, I'll show you how I created the cinematics uh, for the trailer that you saw at the beginning of this series. And then we'll call it a day on the series and think up what we're going to do in the next one. So I will uh, see you in the next episode. Bye for now.